Hi there, welcome to this build of a 48 inch wingspan Diamond Demon. A really great design, vintage design from the late 1930s. Now we're cracking on with this and we've, we're almost there really. We've done the bulk or if not all of the major construction work. We've got the fuselage more or less finished, still a little bit of uh, work around the top here, a little bit of strengthening and stuff, but mostly finished. We've got the tail assembly, the, the fin and the tail plane finished, covered, and that slots in nicely on the, uh, on the fuselage there. We've also got the wings finished and covered, and we've been covering this in a a Doculam laminating film and a nice Asuka Japanese tissue which has gone on absolutely lovely. And now the next stage in this build I think is to actually mock this up because what we need to do after that is to fit the servos, the radio gear and the battery. Now that is equipment that we have a little bit of leeway that we can move. It needs to be obviously where we can get to it, but we can move it forward or backwards a little bit depending upon the best location to put it. And to decide on that, what we're going to do is we're going to mock this up, we're going to put everything on and together that can't be moved. So the engine we're going to put in, we're going to put the fuel tank in, spark ignition system up the front. We're going to put the wheels on, the wings on, and so everything, we're going to mock it up as best we can with everything that can't be moved. And then we'll see where the CG is naturally falling on this model, and we'll see how that compares to the CG that is specified on these plans, and whether we're nose heavy compared to that or tail heavy. What I'm hoping <laughs> I'm not sure it will be, but what I'm hoping is that we're going to end up with a nose-heavy plane. And the reason being, or at least at this stage, a nose-heavy plane. Because then we can put the radio gear in, which is going to go behind the CG and help to bring that nose-heavy plane to the CG that is specified on the plans. So we will put the radio gear and the battery, of course, which has some weight, back behind the CG and that will help to balance that nose heavy because what we want to do is we want to get this plane so when it's finished it balances more or less correct as regards this balance point on the plane. We don't want to finish a plane and find we've got it really tail heavy and we have to put a load of lead in the nose or similarly really nose heavy and we have to put a, a load of lead in the tail. Now what I'm hoping to do with this is I'm hoping to put a micro servo, which I've got, a very small one, we'll have a look at it in a bit anyway, and I'm hoping to put that right down in the tail here. But unless we've got a fair bit of uh, weight in the nose that makes it that little bit nose heavy, we might have problems trying to get it to balance if we put a servo down here. So anyway, I'll stop talking now and I will get this mocked up as best as possible, as I said, with everything that can't be moved, and then we'll see where that CG is falling. Right, well, I've now got this mocked up, and it's really exciting to see it coming together like this. And it's the first time I've had the engine bolted in properly, and it's a bit of a tight squeeze with the bolts coming up from underneath, but it is possible and it makes it look a lot neater having this all enclosed and the solution we've got. You'll have probably seen that hopefully on a previous video. I've got a little bit of excess hose here, which is adding a bit of weight that won't be there in the finished model, but then I haven't fuel proofed it. So hopefully the fuel proofing and removing that excess hose will balance each other out. The axles for the wheels, they're a little bit longer than need be, they need trimming, so I haven't put the keepers on, I've just put a couple of elastic bands. So this is more or less as it's going to be. Now, if you've seen the previous videos, you'll know I've worked really, really hard 
to get the battery up under the nose here for the spark ignition system to get the coil and the electronic ignition nice and as far forward as possible to really get that weight up the front so that the radio gear which you can see on the bench here I can put back as far as possible without making it tail heavy or too tail heavy. So now the moment of truth we need to see where the CG is falling and oh and just one other point before I do that you see I've got some nice black well they're not quite black but they're supposed to be black elastic bands to hold the wings on just thought that would look a, a little bit more subdued than uh, these big uh, sort of big white elastic bands you can get for vintage models so hopefully this is going to be nose heavy because I want to get this radio gear as far back from the ignition system as possible to reduce the potential for interference so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my fingers on the CG as shown on the plan whoa and you can see that is really nose heavy which is really really good to my mind because that is just what I was trying to achieve getting all that ignition system up the front so now this radio gear which we'll have a look at in a second we can put back in the back of the cockpit around well the CG is there the ignition system is forward of the CG and I want to put the radio gear back here so we'll just have a quick look at the radio gear okay well in selecting this equipment I've tried to choose things that are really light I've got a about a four and a half gram servo here from Formax I've got a Emax servo which is a quite a lightweight I think this is about eight and a half grams I've got a I, I fly um, Flysky transmitters and receivers and this is one of their really light re uh, receivers which I think it's under 10 grams it's quite a light receiver I've got the switch which is a standard for Tarba switch and I've got an 800 a milliamp hour end loop uh, Panasonic uh, four cell uh, AAA uh, batteries rechargeable and this is a, a, an overlander pack and I've got another of the micro servos here now all of this adds up to about 90 grams and what I'm wanting to do is to put that in the rear section of the fuselage just here you can see all the spark ignition system crammed up in the front there so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put this radio gear in a plastic bag and I'm just going to tuck it through the fuselage there and see how that affects the weight. Now I haven't done this yet and so I have no idea. And, and the other thing I, I must just say is what I want to do is I want to put this small 4Max uh, uh, servo in the back here. I want to have that right down the end because it will just make life so much easier with regards to the uh, to the linkages so we'll put that in there now where I want to have it and I will thread the extension cable for that down the fuselage and we'll get this other gear in in a plastic bag like I said okay well I've got the radio gear in the plastic bag I've got my extension cable for the servo which actually is a little bit too long so I may get a slightly shorter one and hopefully this will just thread through there so I've got all the radio gear in now just where I would like to put it and I do think this is going to make it a little bit tail heavy but hopefully we could just put a little bit of weight in the nose to finally balance that out but we'll see and I think the benefits of that servo will be really good because it's quite a difficult linkage to come to the top of to the rudder on top of the tail plane doing the linkage for the elevator is not a problem but this one could be quite difficult if I wanted to run it from up in the cabin 
So, let's see where the CG is, and I have no idea how this is going to come out. Oh wow. Oh, I am, re <laughs> I am really pleased, and to be honest, quite surprised. I was expecting that to be a little tail heavy because of all this radio gear, but that is brilliant and it's just it couldn't have been better really in fact it was that good i'm gonna <laughs> i feel so pleased about it i'm gonna do it again i mean we have to remember in fact if anything it is slightly nose heavy still which is fine absolutely fine i would much rather have it slightly nose heavy than slightly tail heavy because it will be easier because of the longer momentum here just to put a small amount of weight in the tail if that's needed but we have to remember we've still got all the covering to go on here so that as well is going to affect the uh, the cg well this has been a really worthwhile exercise because we've seen from this that we can probably get the solution that we wanted and get the CG more or less right, which is a really big boost. And I honestly have no idea whether this would balance out or not. I hadn't tried it before filming this. It's, uh, you know, you're, you were seeing it as I was seeing it. And I'm really pleased that, that it looks like we're gonna be able to get this balanced. And as I said earlier, I did try really hard to get all the necessary weight like the coil and the battery for the spark ignition and everything up the front and I'm so pleased that we can get this micro servo in the back here and I think this micro servo will be fine for this rudder it's free moving it's not going to do a lot of work it's it's essentially a free flight model with a rudder to keep it in the vicinity of the airfield so I mean the one thing I realized that I haven't accounted for is I'm going to have a tiny little bit of thin one mil wire here for the connection for the rudder and I'm going to have a carbon fiber rod which comes down to the elevator and we have just a, a single elevator on that side and uh, if we turn that around we can see that. So now we can get on and we can get this radio gear fitted and uh, and we can feel good about doing it rather than worried that it, it we might end up putting a, a shed load of lead in the front i mean if if we had got problems then i don't know you know how we could have resolved that because everything is so tight in this model and i have wondered a few times if i'm mad trying to fit spark ignition in uh, in such a a small model but particularly with the radio gear because of course Originally this was a spark ignition model in, I think it was 1937 when it, it first came out and it had um, an Olsen and Rice or I think then it was just Olsen uh, 23 spark ignition engine up front. So, next episode I'm going to start, I, I, I'm going to do a run of the engine at some point and show all the ignition gear. I might do that next or I might start working on the, uh, on the servos and getting everything in. But I'll have a think about which is the best order to do things. But hopefully you've found this interesting and saw the, seen the real benefits of, of mocking it up and just making sure we're on the right track to get this balance right. And as I said earlier, I am so chuffed that this looks like it's gonna be coming out right and uh, with the, the CG in the right place. And of course the CG is quite a way back on these wings because we've got a, a, a lifting tail which always moves the CG back a little bit. So anyway, I hope you found that useful and interesting. Thanks very much for watching.